to see what happens. Hey, Instagram, it's me, T, from the Patterson's taking the pants. Okay, coming to you at this weird angle because I'm inside. I'm inside. I'm gonna take my morning walk with the doggy and all that stuff. But uh, it's so windy outside. I can't record outside. You know, so I say to come inside. It's a, it's a Saturday. I hope it's a Saturday. And uh, oh, you know, I told you before. I got this book on Thomas and Carter a long time. But this is before the the, the, the revolution happened, stuff like that. And um, uh, when did I, I had gotten it? Uh, uh, oh, I was I was at the uh, Rhodes University. And uh, well, let me straighten this thing out. I was at, I'm not going to straighten it out. I was at Rhodes University, and it was a, a, a or whatever it is, a, a book, a book launch, and uh, and then this cat had all these books, these little, um, I guess they go to Jahat, uh, the kind, the kind of, the kind of pocketbook biographies, a bunch of, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of stuff like uh, on all kinds of uh, African heroes, and uh, I was like, God, was there? I said, oh, let me buy this. This is like two years, two two years ago. This is more than two years, three years ago, whenever it was, a long time. ago. So I bought it because I like Thomas Sakata. Well, now I'm gonna like it. I met Thomas Sakata. I shook Thomas Sakata's hand. Yeah, this was in the '80s. I came up to New York and I was recording, and I recorded him because he's you know his Lombard breath had this whole thing you know with the the Lombard breath. Our Lombard breath used to run the Patrice the Mumbo Coalition. Peace and blessings of the eternal soul right away. And uh, and so you know through his connections because he's all over Africa. He, at Thomas and Carter, when Thomas and Carter came to New York, they came, and of course I'm recording for BA, I'm recording, why well, I record for Lombie and, and and some more marksmen and stuff like that. So I was there, so I recorded him, and I met him. Nice guy. Oh, by the way, oh, I'm not going to talk to you about this, but by the way, I, I, I know this already, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read it in the book, because, you know, I think I was, the book is by uh, uh, Ernest Hirsch, Ernest Hirsch, H E. Harsh, H A R S C H. Harsh. I'm not. Harsh. Anyway, uh, and, uh, he's a white man, and like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> like, Jay Stuart told me one time, "Oh, book by a white man, and you believe the white man?" No, no, no. He's, he was, he's a good guy. He, 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 he recorded. Well, he, he interviewed a lot of people around at the time and stuff like that. But right here on page uh, 20, uh, chapter two, the forging of a rebel. Thomas Sankara was born December 21st, 1949, which would make him, this December 21st, 75 years old, which means this would be his 70, 75th. So, so let me put it this way. You should expect big big things to be happening in Burkina Faso uh, between now and the end of the year, December 21st. Of course, no. In fact, him and I would be the, yeah, because that means right now, yeah, he's 75 now. No, he'll be 75 December 21st. That's right, he was saying, we're the same age. <laughs> if he had lived, he'd still be, he'd be the same age as me, you know, 74 now. So my, my, my birthday is July 3rd, his birthday is December 21st, 2 and 1 is 3, July 3rd, 3, we both, he, he should be loquacious, he's a, he's a 24-hour kind of person. He, it's all coins and numbers. He's just a dynamic cat, okay? Let's put it that way. Forge his own way, blah, blah, blah. Oh, plus he would be my po. Yeah, he'd be my uh, my my whatever you know. Of course, he'd be uh, he'd be a Capricorn. You can't say he's a Capricorn. Hey, we would get along fabulously if you know if things hadn't happened. Well, that's not what top. Look, here's the thing. Um, so uh, all kinds of stuff comes through my head and stuff like that. And uh, I was see what's happening now with all these uh, assassinations and and. When, and palace intrigue and maneuverings and stuff like that. He's got me to think, right? Because uh, one of the things that uh, that's confounding, if you want to use that word, is that, you know, John Kennedy wanted to get rid of the CIA. Okay, that's well known. Okay. Actually, if you want to go beyond that, uh, really Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, Dwight David Eisenhower, he wanted to get rid of the whole military leaning or whatever it is, but you know, some people got their books in there and stuff happens, right? And then, if you want to push a little forward, uh, Jimmy Carter wanted to get rid of the whole uh, whatever state, but well, uh, what happened with him is that as he was doing that, they sort of, I won't say went underground, but they went like sideways. That's the whole Ollie North thing, you know? 
and so they basically started their own uh, let's call it rogue agents or, or uh, alternative or whatever you want to call them you know and we've been living with that legacy and that tentacles being spread out so right now there are so many first of all there's so many agencies with all these alphabet numbers and they all have their little let's call it military wing or military thinking wing or uh, overthrow ring wing so this agency and that agency they have their elite troops there elite troops there so you have all these people basically uh, vying to be the the next uh, assassin creed I, I, don't do, I don't play that game so I don't know what. assassins there's a lot of rogue assassins <laughs> When I say assassins, I don't mean just physical assassins. But they, their brain, they want to destroy everything, you know. What I mean? Or they want to be an agent for, for for this rich person or that person. In fact, it, and it's like, it's, 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 a, it's a wild west, east, north out here. <laughs> yes, it's a wild west, east, north. I'm telling you. And uh, sorry for the wind, but that's why I'm, I'm inside because this wind. I'm in a rendezvous, uh, I'm in a village. And so I hope you can hear me. Anyway, so this thing is it's getting out of hand, and now what's happening with the, with, with Biden opening the border, and whoever's opening the border, what uh, the border? Yeah, it's a burden, right? You have a lot of uh, people with this wide open border situation. You have a lot of uh, would bees, you know, flooding uh, agents, uh, 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 provocateurs. Uh, 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 revolutionaries, I don't know, counter-revolutionaries, reactionaries, crossing the border. You got, look, there was a report someplace, I think it was in Cleveland, I forget where it was, someplace in the Midwest, Ohio, something like that, where one of these gang gang people that came through, they, they're robbing gun stores. Think about that. They're a gang in, in whatever country they're in, they come to the United States, and they rob gun stores. Now, why would a gang, well, no matter what they said. The point is, uh, United States is, is, is going to be a, a, a wild uh, a west, north, east. <laughs> uh, and, and when I say gangs, I mean, not only, uh, we're not talking about Mexican, we're not only Latin American and South American, but you've got Asian gangs coming over here. We don't know. And then you have the gangs that are already here, you know, or the, or the, 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 the mafia types. So when I say, you know, when I talk about mafia, I'm like, you know, I talk about the Russian mafia, whatever mafia. Israeli mafia, all, all these kind of people. So you got a lot of people running around with guns <laughs> and with agendas. You know, I don't know, somebody, one, one of these cats going to come here, you know, some shopping mall, you know, or some movie theater and just, woof, you know, then we're going to get this, oh, martial law, or whatever you're going to get. What, I'm, what am I trying to say? I'm saying, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm sitting here in South Africa. And, you know, we got other hats stuff happening here, but, you know, the UAE is trying to, to, to come and scratch their way through South Africa, and you got the whole, um, the whole, uh, the whole gold thing with all the Africa and stuff like that, so there's a people all, all over, so I'm just saying, everybody can watch their back, but uh, you folks in the States, and I, I, I might be there in a couple of months, I don't know, see, if, if my sister sent me the ticket, I'll be there, if she don't, I ain't going no place, <laughs> I got stuff to do here anyway, right, so anyway, so I need to go and check in. So I'm gonna be on my P's and Q's and go over there. <laughs> like when I, I see, I live in the Patterson Projects in South Bronx, the Mount Haven section, of South Bronx, and I have a great place. I go all over the city. I go to Harlem, whatever. I go, go to, uh, you know, I, I'd be in uh, a Queensbridge Project. Don't care. When I get back to South Bronx, my home, Patterson Projects, my antennas would go. <laughs> oh, gotta watch. And I live there. So. All I'm trying to say, your antenna should be going up if you're in the South Bronx or somewhere. If you're, if you're in the States right now, man, you, and, and then, woo, don't worry, I'll talk about the whole thing with uh, JFK Jr. and all of us and stuff, maybe maybe tomorrow or something like that. Because, oh, big to-dos, oh, the political intrigue, you got to love it. I got to have your popcorn. One, I'm sorry, one, let me just say what's happening. One more thing. Back in 2003, something when I was up in, in Nepal when the Maoists would do fighting the government, and it was interesting because it used to be back then if you was if something of evil was happening, that was a good time for you to be a tourist in that area because they always protected the tourists. They make sure the tourists, you know, nothing happened to the tourists. Anyway, so I was up there. We was on this hill, and it was like almost like a stadium down there. And it's like the Maoists was fighting the for the, the whatever the, the the forces, whatever the 
government enforcement. And it, it was strange. It was like a, a, a football, well, it was like a, when I say football match, I mean like a, a soccer football. That, that one side goes like that, like that, and all of a sudden, we were standing up there just watching this going back and forth. It was like, get your, what I'm trying to say, get your popcorn out. This is very entertaining if you're not down there with the scrimmages. Okay? Okay, that's it. This had to come to you. Talk to you later. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Oof.